Hello everyone, this is James and Jack History, and if you love history, then this is the channel for you. So if you enjoyed today's video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. Ra, the Egyptian god of the sky, the earth, the underworld, the sun, order, and the kings, was often portrayed as a falcon-headed god with a sun disk on his head. Ra was the original god, and he rose from the waters of Nu on an island... He had two children, Shu, god of air, and Tefna, goddess of moisture. Often in Egyptian culture, siblings would marry each other to preserve bloodlines. This was especially common in the royal household. So Shu and Tefna were married together, and had Nut and Geb, god of the earth and sky, and you guessed it, they married each other and had four children. Since Nut was god of the sky and Geb, Geb the god of earth, it was said that Nut was always laying on Geb, and for that reason they were always doing, uh, you know? Yeah. And from that she gave birth to Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephthys. This leads onto a different topic, which if this gets popular, I will discuss in the next video. Anyway, now I've done the basic family tree, we will discuss Ra. Ra had the most important job of all, ensuring the sun rises each day. So Ra would sail on his boat, the sun, through the 24 kingdoms, one for each hour. And for the first 12, Ra is the king of. But when he passes him to the other two, to, at 12, things get interesting. When he passes through, he dies and is guided through the kingdoms by 12 goddesses of night. One for each knows how to get Ra through a certain gate. The first gate is called the water course of Ra, where nothing really happens. But when Ra enters the second gate, one of the night goddesses calls snakes that guards to the next gate by name, and they allow the boat to pass. The next gate is called Oranos, and it lies, and in it lies the pharaohs of the dead. Pharaohs travel with Ra on this boat and merge with Ra. Now we go to the water, the water course of the only gods, and this is where Osiris judges and weighs the hearts, along with many other gods. The next kingdom is the living one of forms, where a night goddess transforms the boat into a giant snake to take Ra into the next kingdom. The next kingdom is called the is called Hidden where people who were enemies of Ra get dipped in a lake Now we fire. go on to the real realm of night and darkness. This is where Kepra lives. I will discuss him in a minute, and he lands on Ra and continues the journey. The next kingdom is called the Abyss of Waters, where the boat transforms back into a boat and carries on its journey. The next gate is called the Secret Cavern, and this is where the demon Apothis lives, and it is his sworn duty to kill and eat Ra, ending the world. But Isis uses her magic to summon another snake and fight Apothis. Horus also fights Apothis and chases him off. The next gate is called the Sarcophagus of the Gods, where the dead gods live on the banks of the river. The next kingdom is called the Procession of Images, where the living give gifts to the boat. This is also where the scarab beetle Kepra merges with Ra, bringing him back to life. The next kingdom is called the Mouth of Cavern, where all the enemies of Ra are tormented and drown in the lake of fire. Our next gate is where morning begins, and it is called, it's called And Now Darkness Has Fallen, and Birth Shine Forth. Now I will discuss Kepra. So Ra has three forms, Kepra as the morning form of Ra, Ra as the day, Kaham as the evening, and Atom as the afternoon. He's always Ra, but during different times of the day, he is slightly different. Kepra is a dung beetle because they roll dung or poo into balls to create their nests, and in Egyptian mythology, this can be represented as the sun, as the dung beetle rolls it into a new day. Now the goddess Gut Nut gives birth to Ra and the cycle begins again. You may have heard of the name Amun Ra before, which is the god Amun and Ra joined together to create the ultimate and powerful god. 
Thebes was the capital city of Egypt, and the protector of Thebes was Amun. So the cult of Amun rose from being a small village cult to a country wide cult. So as Amun grew, they decided to merge with Ra. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please consider subscribing. And if this becomes popular, I will do the myth of Isis and Osiris. Thank you, and bye!